Ayo, and what is up, gang? Thank you so much for joining us here again today on Sledgehammer TV. We have got breaking news in the world of pro wrestling as the WWE's cruiserweight star, Rich Swan found himself waking up behind bars this morning, and we are here to talk about that and so much more right here, right now, on the newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, baby! The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. So... Let's do it. Alright wrestling fans, thank you once again so much for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. Along with me, of course, as always, is my little buddy, my loyal companion, and the world heavyweight champion of microphones, blew the snowball microphone, and we were not planning on being here today. Honestly, I was looking forward to maybe taking the day off. I've been working very hard this week. We put up a lot of videos as well as my actual job. So I'm exhausted and I was looking forward to coming home tonight and relaxing with my favorite cold beverage and sucking it down nice and fast so that I could feel the effects and just relax. But the news never stops and we cannot relax. And this story is one of those stories where I come on here and I preface the whole entire show by telling you guys that this is not why we are here. We do not come here to talk about bullshit news like this. But news is news. And that is my job, to bring you the news as terrible, as stupid, and as ridiculous as the situation may be. Now, before we get into the dirt and what we know at this time on the arrest of Rich Swan. It is all being supposedly stemmed off of a domestic violence encounter with his wife. We're going to get more into the details on the situation, but I want to start off by telling everybody out there right now, each and every one of you, if you or a friend or somebody that you love is involved in a toxic relationship, that involves abuse or violence of any kind. Don't be afraid to look for help. Find ways to maybe reach out and help the person in need if it's not you yourself. Maybe you just want somebody to talk to about what's going on in your life and maybe get advice on how to deal with this certain situation that unfortunately you find yourself in. And if that is the case, and you don't know where to go, I am here to help you out. This is a situation that is a little close to the heart for me, and I can't do enough to try to bring you guys any type of awareness to the fact that there is help. There is help, and you can go and find some of that help. Two of the absolute best places you can go is the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the NCADV. You could visit their website, as you can see here, ncadv.org. They have a lot of resources available to you. Just an open chat, and there's also a safety button. First time I've seen one of these, so I guess if you are living with a person, you can hit that button, which will immediately exit out the browser, keeping you safe and uh, keeping the suspicion down to a minimum. You can also look for help at the National Domestic Violence Hotline website. The hotline.org is where you can find it. These are just two of the very many available resources to you guys if you want to take action and look for help. Or like I said, even just look for a kind ear that will let you unload and perhaps maybe give you some credible advice. Do not be afraid. Go get the help if you need it. And that's my little PSA on this particular scenario. Now, let's get in 
to the story, which was reported first today by Pro Wrestling Sheet and Ryan Satin and the boys over there. Let me pull up the official article here. Pro Wrestling Sheet has learned WWE superstar Rich Swan is currently behind bars. According to the Alachua County Sheriff in Florida, Swan was taken into custody around 12 a.m. on Sunday morning and no bond amount has been listed. The charges against Swan are listed as battery and kidnapping slash false imprisonment of an adult. That's weird. No further details are available at this time. There are two minor updates to this report listed below. Update number two was that Rich was no longer in police custody and has probably has been released uh, for some reason. I don't know. I I'll never understand why people get released in this scenario when they are clearly a danger to those around them. It doesn't make sense to me, but however, he is back out in the public and the second update here update number three police just released the report stating that it was a domestic issue with his wife rich swan is married to independent wrestler sue young interesting sidebar sue young is going to be performing this saturday at house of glory seven at which we will be attending and bringing you all the coverage that we can. But this show is not about my show or House of Glory or the coverage that we bring you in pro wrestling. This story is about what the hell I just read to you. This is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. I don't know the facts, but I can tell you right now that there is not one fact that you could give me that can justify Rich Swan getting physical or abusive or kidnapping his own girlfriend. It, what? Like, what the hell is going on in the house of Swan? Honestly, I really don't want to know. I'm not really that interested, being that it's not a positive scenario. Isn't it just that way, though, with life? Like, there's these guys, like, you look at a guy like Rich Swan, since you've seen him at the debut of the Cruiserweight Classic, and here's this guy, he's all fucking smiles. He's happy. He's dancing. He's the kind of guy that you feel like you might want to hang out with. He looks like he can have a good time hanging out with Rich Swan. He's full of personality. He's full of character. He seems like a great guy, right? That's always the case with this type of a person that can do whatever it is he did that would end him up behind bars. At the hands of his own woman. Your woman is the one person in your life that does everything for you. She pretty much, you know, when a woman loves you, they are devoted to you. They give you their all, which is why you don't want to do things like cheat on your woman. You don't want to hurt your woman in any way. I have been with the same woman for 20 years. We were, in fact, just talking about some of the trials and tribulations that we have gone through in the last two decades as a couple. And how never once have we strayed. Never once have we been in a scenario where I have been physically threatening to my wife or to my daughter or to any member of my family in any way. No matter how angry I may get, I'm not saying I don't get mad. Everybody gets mad. You get mad. If you got half a decent heart, you got mad just at the premise of the story that we're talking about right now. You can see it's obviously something that bothers me very much. Because I don't understand it. There's that old saying, you hurt the people you love the most. I say that's bullshit, man. I say that's bullshit. If you truly love that person and you truly want to be with that person, you could never physically harm that person. You wouldn't want to put that person through mental anguish and, and make them feel bad about themselves or, or make them feel scared of you? Why would you want people in your life to be afraid of you? What happened to love, man? You told this girl you love her and now she's got you behind bars. Like we said, this is all just us talking about the situation. We do not know the facts. We do not know what exactly happened. But there is nothing she could have done that could justify physical altercation. Kidnapping. Kidnapping? How do you kidnap your own girlfriend? Like, what was he doing? Not allowing her to leave 
Is that considered kidnapping? Did he lock her up in his bedroom? Did he lock her in the basement? Did he not allow her? Maybe he didn't get physical at all and maybe he just confined her in the house because maybe she wanted to leave him. Who cares what the reasoning is? None of it justifies any of Rich Swan's actions. Obviously, it landed him in prison this morning, and the WWE this afternoon was very, very quick to make the news known that coming directly from Stamford, Connecticut, the WWE has zero tolerance, as do I, for matters involving domestic violence, and per their policy, Rich Swan has been suspended indefinitely following his arrest this morning in Florida. Absolutely disgusting. What a disgrace. What a fucking disgrace. And of course it happens at the best time. Like, you would think that he would be over the moon. What could possibly have him that mad? You know, he's on, you know, 205 Live. He's with the WWE. He's making dreams come true. He had this real feel-good story. He was homeless at one point in his life. He's turned his life around. He's become something... And this is what you did. And now it all goes away. It's all going to be taken away like that. Like it was never there in the first place. And you're going to probably find yourself back where you started. Which is out on the street with nobody. If this is how you choose to treat the people you love. An absolute disgrace. I hate even having to bring this news to you. There's nothing really more we could say about it. How, how much can I tell you guys? How much more can I explain how much I hate this scenario? How much it angers me. And how even a, a little guy like me that probably wouldn't hurt him wants to punch Rich Swan right in the mouth. I don't care. I don't care what sort of twisted psychological reasoning he has. These type of people that do these things, there's always a reason behind it, right? And usually the victim is the one that champions that reason. Oh, well, you know, he's really stressed out or she's really been stressed out. So, she, you know, she's been going off the hand a little bit. I can deal with it. Or no, you know, well, he, they're a little bipolar. So, you know, I just deal with this every once in a while. You know, there's a million and one excuses. Oh, he just got laid off. He's under a lot of pressure at work. I, I cooked his steak wrong. I didn't iron my clothes right. I didn't do the laundry. There's a million and one stupid reasons that they'll put to justify it, but there is no justifying domestic violence. And he absolutely deserves to have everything ripped away from him. And I truly, truly doubt that we will ever see Rich Swan again in a WWE ring. Zero tolerance means zero tolerance. So if you make this announcement and then you bring him back a year from now just because it's blown over, no. This isn't a slip of the tongue with a racial slur. This is not a tweet, you know, that, that maybe the company didn't like, that you can punish him and then bring him back. This is a serious situation. This man is a bully. Because that's all these people like that do these things are. They're bullies. They're bullies of a whole extreme sort. And we'll talk a little bit more about bullies right now because there's another situation going on which has been blowing up Twitter all day long. There has been a video that has surfaced on Twitter of a young man. I don't know how old he might be. His name is Keaton Jones. Why am I telling you about Keaton Jones? Well, it's almost in the same light on uh, why I brought the helpline and stuff to you. Because it needs to be shared. It needs to be brought to your consciousness and I need to bring awareness to my fandom, to the guys that come here because I know my fans have a good heart. I know you guys wouldn't sit here and be loyal to me if you weren't good people. You are respectful and you are always nice in the comments section. You support and love this show and I know that you're nice, kind-hearted people. So the next story that we're going to talk about here is going to probably piss you off as well because I came home from work, like I said, ready to relax and now I already knew since I seen at lunchtime that I had to do this Rich Swan thing. And now I'm seeing this video up and down my timeline of this poor little kid. And everybody, you know, saying I feel bad for him. And, and all the biggest names in wrestling and some of the busy, biggest names across entertainment are retweeting this video and bringing it to light 
to the whole entire country. From Dana White of the UFC to Kurt Angle, Goldust, AJ Styles, your world heavyweight champion, has brought this and, and made mention of this. And Kevin Owens, it's just going to be... Uh, it's being exposed to the wrestling community at, at a massive rate. It was dominating my Twitter feed. So I had to watch it. I needed to know what everybody was talking about. And for a minute and 15 seconds, I listened to Keaton Jones, who was sitting in the car, I'm assuming with his mom, and he was very emotional about how he's been bullied at school. And unfortunately, his, um, his appearance is a little different. You know, it's, it's not what people would consider normal. Um, I don't know what to call it. I don't want to offend anybody, especially not the kid. That is not the point of doing any of this. So I don't know how to tread around it. But the kid's face is a little swollen in areas. I don't know if it's resulted from an injury. I don't know what the cause of, of this facial impairment is. But apparently he's getting a lot of shit for it from the asshole kids at school. Right now, you know, kids are assholes. Everybody knows that kids have no filter. They don't know because nobody's teaching them properly. And that's the problem. It stems from the parenting at home. You know, back in the day in the 80s when I was growing up, I had an altercation with a young man. I was verbally, I guess, insulting him. And I got a letter sent home and they made a whole big deal about it. My dad made me apologize to the kid. You learn your lesson by your parents telling you what's right and wrong. These kids that walk around today and they're all cocky and braggadocious and they're full of piss and vinegar and they're trying to pick on all the little guys and the different kids. There's something wrong with them too. That's what it is. They're pretty much looking in a mirror. There's something about themselves they don't like, so they're taking it out on you, whether it be their family life or their own physical attributes. I grew up my whole life being teased and bullied that I was a fat kid. Because I was. I was an overweight kid. That doesn't give any other kid a right to call me something. These kids at, at Keaton Jones School have absolutely no right to ridicule him because of the way his face looks. It's not his fault that his face looks like that. If anything, you should be embracing him and helping him and making him feel like a cool kid. Make him feel special. Because what if that was you, you dumbass kid? Huh? What if that was one of you? What if that was your little brother? What if that was your best friend? And you just sitting eating lunch and somebody's over there throwing shit at you, calling you names. It's unnecessary. And it's a shame that this kind of stuff is still going on. But you're not going to control children. You can't control all the kids all the time. It's not going to happen. That's like asking for there to not be any death ever. Like, it's just, it's not going to happen. Kids are going to be bad. Kids are going to be rude. They have no filter. But when these situations present themselves and it's being brought to the attention of the parent and the parent clearly doesn't care enough to show their kids that you don't do that kind of thing, that's where the whole thing stems from. So that's why part of the reason I'm bringing it to you, you guys out there that are parents, we're all going to be faced with this. My daughter's only five years old right now. And you could already see in the five-year-olds that there are clicks and things are said and feelings get hurt. But it's how you handle these moments at home. You don't get outraged and react and, and boycott and go against the kid and want to talk to the school and the teacher and the parents of the other kid. You don't do all that shit. You sit down with your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your kid's best friend, whoever it is that's having the problem. Reach out to these kids. Let them know that, hey, it's not all right for these people to be doing this to you. And you have to stand up for yourself first before anybody else will stand behind you. It's a lesson that I learned the hard way. I was a reclusive little kid. I stayed in a shell. I didn't tell anybody anything that I was ever going through until one day I just had enough. And I've been the better for it. You just, you know, growing pains are there no matter who you are. It doesn't matter. Every single one of us out there was a kid once and there was a mountain we had to climb. 
There was something in our face that made us feel bad. It might have been the cool kid. Maybe it got rejected by the prettiest girl in school. Maybe it was all of those things. Maybe you were ridiculed because of the color of your hair. Or because you were wearing braces. Or because you were wearing glasses. It's important for us to let the world know that A, that type of behavior is not okay and you should not be treating other people that way. And then to the victims of this abuse, you have to let them know that standing up is the best defense against them. You don't have to get physical, but just don't sit there silent and take it. Your reaction more often than not is what they're looking for. So if you don't give them the reaction that they want and you give them a little back sass back, that's going to make you a bigger character. It's going to make you better than the other guy. Because you have respect for yourself. You have respect for others. And if somebody disrespects you, you are not afraid to stand up for yourself. Keaton Jones has a ton of support right now. Ton of support right now by some of the hugest names in all of sports. And I fully support the whole entire movement. This kid should be made to feel special right now. The tears that he was welled up with and the genuine, you know, just sorrow in his voice. And I I don't know what the scenario of the video was, but it seemed to me, if I were to make a guess, the kid probably didn't want to get out of the car to go to school because of what he's been going through. And his mom videoed him Asking him questions about it, which is kind of mean, you know, but I understand why she did it. She's bringing awareness to the situation, as we are doing right now as well. So I want to wish the best to Keaton Jones. If he happens to get his eyes on this video, I hope he takes everything that I said to heart. And he needs to know that there is no excuse for being treated that way. None. And I hope that the WWE and all these people that are looking to reach out to you definitely do find their way to you and make you feel as special as possible because you are an amazing kid and other kids stink. That's the bottom line. Do not let words hurt you like weapons because they're not. At the end of the day, they're just words. And when the words stop, it's only silence. Right? So what do the words mean? It's just air. It's absolutely nothing. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is Blue the Snowball Microphone. This has been a very dramatic and a very emotional and a very impassioned message to the masses brought to you by the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right here on Sledgehammer TV. Thank you guys for indulging me. I hope you enjoyed today's show. You know, like I said, we were not here to entertain As much as we are to make everybody aware. And to maybe, you know, join together. You know, let's be nice to each other. Let's let's be nice to people online with us. Let's not be so quick with our tongues. Because you never know what kind of damage you may be doing. And before you say anything, why don't you think about how you would feel if somebody said what you wanted to say to you. And maybe... Gauge how you're going to go about it off of that. Because do one to others as you would have done to you. That is going to do it. And we are out of here. And we will see you next time. Hopefully with much more pleasant and better news. Right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you tomorrow night for the Monday Night Raw Review. Do not forget to smash that like button. Share this video and subscribe. Thank you so much. We are out of here. We'll see you next time.